My name is Eric Kearney. I'm the uh, minority leader in the Ohio uh, Senate. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, they say that where there's no vision, the people perish. And I would say that Governor Kasich's speech today lacked vision. For instance, he said, uh, if there's a problem, he'll present a solution. I have yet to hear his solution for foreclosure. I have yet to hear his solution for child poverty. I have yet to hear his solution for infant mortality. About, uh, also about local governments. Where is his solution for that? Secondly, he said, we're out of the ditch. Well, I'd like to know how we're out of the ditch when there are more food pantries than there have ever been in our state when uh, the foreclosure epidemic, which is also so prevalent in my district in Cincinnati and is prevalent here in Steubenville, still occurs. He said, if you have an idea to create jobs, please present it to him. Well, the Senate Democratic Caucus presented a bill about jobs. It was over 500 pages long. We have yet to hear a response from the governor after presenting it to him months ago. Now I want you to hear from my other colleagues in the Senate Democratic Caucus, and, and after that we'll be ready for questions. Uh, Assistant Leader Joe Schiavone. Hi everybody, I just wanted to talk briefly a little bit about uh, bipartisanship. You know, he tried to paint a real rosy picture about bipartisanship down in Columbus and how, you know, everybody, uh, he wants to work together with everyone. You know, I've, I've attempted multiple times um, to work with his office. One, one incident where uh, we tried to get unemployment compensation extended for people that were in need. Everybody said, you know, come to his office, work with him. You couldn't even get in the door. And these are the kind of things that are very upsetting to me. Although I work well with our members in the Senate when it comes to the governor's office, he, he always says come to him, but you never seem to uh, be able to work with him unless you vote for something that he's in favor of, and then he thanks you for working with him. But it doesn't go the other way, and that's something that I hope we can work on, uh, as that's, that's something that I find that's very problematic. You know, it was quite interesting to hear the governor, State Senator Nina Turner from uh, Greater Cleveland. It was quite interesting to hear the governor talk about the deficit and also the Speaker of the House alluded to the fact that he didn't know how the General Assembly closed the $8 billion deficit. Well, I'll tell you how the deficit was closed. It was closed on the backs of local government. Billions of dollars cut from the local government fund, cat tax tangible personal property taxes. So the way the state of Ohio closed the budget deficit was to abdicate its responsibility and pass it on to local governments. So now mayors have to deal with the laying off of police officers and firefighters. You know, I don't know about you, but when our constituents dial 911, they want to know that help is on the way. I'll tell you how they closed the $8 billion deficit. They took away money through the estate tax. And one of the most critical times in our state and country's history due to the fiscal crisis of 2008, the Republican side of the General Assembly had the pure, unadulterated goal to repeal the estate tax. You know, mayor, you know, a lot of talk about the mayor of the city of Cleveland and wanting to do some great things to save Cleveland's children. Well, Cleveland's children needs a city that's safe. They need police officers that are on duty. They need firefighters that are on duty. They need EMS workers that are on duty. So this kind of backhanded way of saying that they care about cities and local governments, meanwhile robbing them blind, and they are the ones faced with making the cuts and standing before their constituents and saying to, to Mrs. Jones, I can't plow your snow or I can't pick up your garbage because the state of Ohio just cut, cut our local government funds. If this is what the, the uh, Republican Party, uh, uh, if this is what the Republican Party care, uh, calls looking out for local governments, they are a dollar short and a day late. It is abs absolutely shameful. Empty, 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 empty uh, state of the state today. And, and people should be ashamed of what, what went on here today. I'm State Senator Charlita Tavares out of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, one of the areas that I wanted to really focus in on was one area that there was bipartisan support on, and that was the patient choice with respect to home care or nursing home, uh, those who are the patients making decisions. And my colleague, uh, Senator Cafaro, and uh, those of us who worked on health care issues on both sides of the aisle really pushed for that. So that's a great step forward, but there are 1.4 million uninsured people in the state of Ohio. 
we still have not worked towards developing a health care exchange. My colleague, Senator Skindle, uh, has a bill that would promote an exchange in the state of Ohio. We are going to be far behind of other states and will not have the resources that we could be receiving to ensure that people have health care. I'm a firm believer that we do need to integrate behavioral health and primary health care. Uh, however, the olive branch has not been extended to those on the other side of the aisle. We talk by bipartisanship, but actions speak louder than words. You can't just say it. You do have to extend the, the branch. You do have to extend uh, to the other caucuses in the House and in the Senate because we have ideas and our people have ideas, and we want to work towards a better Ohio. Uh, so finally, with respect to uh, health care for those who are most vulnerable, African Americans and other racial and ethnic populations where we have disparate conditions, people dying prematurely, unnecessarily, because they're not getting the kind of care, the appropriate care that they need. We talk about infant mortality, but you have to have comprehensive health care for women in order to have babies who are born healthy. If you don't have a comprehensive health care plan for the mother, the baby will not be born healthy and in some cases will die at birth. We have a very high infant mortality rate in the state of Ohio, higher than third world countries. Talk is cheap. We've got to put our resources where they matter, where we have disparities in health care for our very youngest. The true measure of the health care of a society is how we treat our youngest residents and our babies are dying. I want to turn it over to my colleague. Did you want to follow up on the health? Okay. I'm Tom Sawyer from the Akron area. And there are two numbers that I'd like to share with you. One is $2.9 billion. The other is $440 million. And those are the figures that represent the amount of money that was saved out of what I think actually turned out to be closer to a $6 billion. Than an $8 billion. But those were saved 